was going to try and do this with my new setup for my nice YouTube camera, but I can't get the cord to work. So here we are with the webcam. I know that the quality is diminished and everything, and that the lighting is weird, but we're just going to deal with it because my face is going to be really tiny for most of this video. Let me, how do I do this? Let me share my screen. Like, like this. Come here. Now, this is Dr. David Falk. He is a professional Egyptologist. He really knows his stuff. He knows what he's talking about. So let's not take my word for it. Let's hear from a scholar in the field about how clothes worked in the ancient world. And this is not where this is supposed to be. Let me back this up to the right time. It needs to be 40, 45. Here we go. So, so how many people were included in about the Exodus? Exodus? What was the estimated figure? Wow, that's that's a really um, controversial topic in the field. That's okay. probably the most controversial topic. The total because what do you what do you think? I include this question because it leads very naturally up to the next part where they talk about clothes. Um, I realize that this doesn't sound relevant, but it, it, it sounded weird to me without including the question that led up to it. So it's context. Uh, I think it's in the hundreds of thousands. <clears throat> okay. So you I don't think that a hundred, hundreds of thousands of people would have left something behind that we would have found? No, not necessarily. What would, what would they be leaving anyway? Think about this. Maybe what would clothes? they be leaving? Maybe some no, dead behind. Cloth was valuable. Cloth was valuable. Oh, that's Especially better. if you don't have, have the means to make more. So then I mean, it would have just been trash. The Middle trash. Ages cloth was valuable because people were collecting. I mean, we look at the Middle Ages and we see these people going around collecting rags. Why were they collecting rags? Because cloth was valuable. No, they're not going to throw away perfectly good cloth if it can be used for absolutely anything else. Okay, so let me stop sharing and pull up my script. Yes, I'm using a script. Where did it go? Oh, no. Unprofessional. Okay, so think about Peter. Peter was naked on his fishing vessel, and people want to say, oh, this doesn't mean, like, naked naked. You know, he was still wearing something. The, the problem with that is that if your one garment, as likely as not, you'll probably only own one or two outfits. If you're going out onto your boat, and you're afraid you're going to rip your clothes on a hook, or on a, uh, a jutting, protruding part of the boat, or that you're going to snag it on a broken piece of wood or with, you know, splinters and things like that, or with your net hooks, the, and your net needles, those sorts of things. Uh, there are physical dangers, but then also think about you're spending all day around fish. It's a lot of slime. It's a lot of stank to end up on your clothes. And then you take that back home and you've got to scrub that on what? A river rock. You've got to scrub it on a river rock. That tunic isn't going to last the summer. You're going to ruin that thing by scrubbing it on rocks all the time. So if you were in that situation and your tunic cost you an arm and a leg and it was probably the only one you had, maybe you had a spare at the house if you were lucky, you wouldn't wear that on a boat either. <laughs> you can also think about it in terms of Isaiah in chapter 20, where uh, he strips naked to emulate the prisoners of war. Those prisoners of war were being stripped completely naked. They weren't wearing any cloth at all because cloth was valuable. Uh, these people weren't being captured and then humiliated by being undressed. That was part of it, but that wasn't why the ravagers were stripping their captives. It's because the clothing was valuable. They wanted the money. They were going to sell those or they were going to keep them for themselves. Also, in the book of Job, Job speaks of filthy rich people who have rooms full of silver and rooms full of clothes. Those are both symbols of wealth for Job. The absence of a moral requirement in the ancient moral codes of the Bible, like the Ten Commandments, the Torah as a whole, or the Sermon on the Mount, or Proverbs, the absence of this kind of moral requirement from these passages 
leaves the conscience of the, the poor people free since they couldn't have afforded to be clothed all the time anyway. It would have been a cruel moral prohibition to lay on them. So I just wanted to remind y'all that the idea that cloth was extremely expensive in the ancient world uh, is not just a thing that Christian naturists say. We didn't pull this out of a hat. This is the scholarly understanding of the price of cloth in the ancient world. 